Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Journey of an Awakening Spirit. This is your host, Kathleen Flanagan, and we are streaming on the Bold Brave TV network. The purpose of the show is to help you realize that you are not alone. You are in control of your life. It does not matter what your lot in life is or where you came from. We have all felt pain, suffering, hurt, abandonment, loneliness, and hopelessness. This show helps you to take those dark moments and turn them around to create a whole new you. We were taught to be a certain way, act a certain way, and to conform to society. Being socialized is not bad, but it can put constraints on us. The guests I bring on the show are telling you their story of where they came from, the obstacles they overcame, and where they are today. They are sharing the tools they use to recreate themselves and their life. On podcast.kathleenmflanagan.com is a list of the guests that have been on the show with their contact information. I'm aware that you may resonate with one or several of them. My desire is that this becomes a community where you have access to the people you wish to align with and utilize the tools that they have, as well as the tools being offered on KathleenMFlanagan.com. I am a certified coach who can help you reach your dreams. I help you to learn how to rely on and believe in your unlimited potential and power. I already know that you've experienced flashes of intuitive knowledge and big thinking that has wondering you wondering just how far you could fly if only. I'm here to help you stir up that innate knowing and self-trust already instilled deep within you. I help you to forge forward when the old you would rather give up and turn back. Awakeningspirit.com is an aromatherapy based company. It's a body care line that offers alternative <clears throat> healing remedies that uses natural and organic ingredients. We are offering a 40% discount by entering Brave TV into the coupon code. If the formula doesn't work, then feel free to contact me and I will reformulate the blend specifically for you. Grandma's Natural Remedies.net is a CBD company that uses essential oils in every blend and has an isolate or broad spectrum. Every product is tested and the lab results are on the website. And we are offering a 20% discount by entering Brave TV into the coupon code. I start the show every week with sounds from the tuning forks. I bring in love, happiness, and balance. This sets the tone for the show and brings out the best in both myself and my guest. Let's begin. Brigitte Weiser is soul, in, is soul empowerment coach, divine channel and light language healer, delivering messages from the many light beings to the aid of humanity in the hope that people will awaken to what life is all about. Brigitte taps into the timeless wisdom of this ancients, drawing from a wellspring of inner knowledge amassed over a lifetime. Though tested by her own trials, she has chosen to rise above, emerging as a beacon of light. Brigetta now channels this hard-won wisdom up light and inspire others. Her profound insights remind us of the strength we each hold within, even in our most difficult moments. Like the ancients, Brigetta has discovered that true power comes not by avoiding our struggles, but by meeting them with courage. Brigetta's soul is as free as the wind. This adventurous Dutch Spirit has voyaged across the globe, calling many places home. Her nomadic blood has led her down unconventional paths, gathering skills and experiences. From runaways to bar tops, this chameleon has modeled mixed, con mixed cocktails and much more. Brigetta follows her intuition, allowing it to guide her through life's twists and turns. Whether crafting natural soaps, designing jewelry, or leading workshops, she nourishes creativity. 
Though she currently still holds a corporate job, she's an inspiration reminding us to seek our purpose, challenge our comfort zones, and unravel ourselves to live far more authentically. Whenever the compass points next, Brigetta's bags are packed with an open mind and courage to thrive. She is simply here to offer her words as food for thought in unlocking your, our own potential and becoming authentically ourselves while journeying back to the unfolding of the beautiful lotus of the light of who we are. Brigetta encourages, encourages us to walk this path with authenticity, unlocking the truth of who we are meant to be. Her gentle guidance is a candle in the darkness, illuminating the way homeless, home to others. Life is like the sound of music. You've got to dance before the music stops and live a little bit before life is over. Welcome, Brigetta. Oh, that was a whole mouthful. I can't uh, believe it. I know. Oh, You're thanks. the one who wrote it, so I had to honor that. But yeah, I remember talking to you and reading this and going, oh my God, that's exactly how you described your life when we had our little 15-minute conversation yeah. many months ago. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thank you for that intro. Uh, that was beautiful. And thank you for having me on your show. You're welcome. So why don't you tell the audience a little bit about how you became, um, about your journey of becoming an awakening spirit? Well, that, I did, that didn't go over one night's ice, you know, as the saying goes. It took many, many years and um, many, many experiences, often marked by trauma. And, um, you know, we all go through suffering, we all go through pain, but it's ultimately how we deal with it um, that sets the tone for, you know, better tomorrows, as I always say. It's really our choice. Um, and it's all about taking responsibility for our lives. Yes, for me, it started like when I was a kid. Um, when I was about 10 years old and I was molested by a friend of the family, uh, actually, my dad's business associate, but what do I know? I'm 10 years old. It's the 1980s. Yeah, you don't talk about that stuff. I don't even understand it. And so I just kept it bottled inside and I just walked around with it. And <clears throat> then when we returned to Holland at the age of 13, I was 13, my sister was 12. Um, my dad passed away from coronary heart disease you know, hopped on his bike. He, he did go to the hospital, but then he didn't want to take his medication after that. And he was actually, to be truthful with you, Kathleen, he was tired of life. He was 44 years old um, and he had to start again. You know, he had a family and he was basically just tired of life. So he hopped on his bicycle and he, it was like taking, he fell off his bike. It was like, like taking a last breath and that was it. But you know, being an, I, I just turned 14 and my sister was still 12. And at that age, it's tough for any kid. It's tough because it seems so surreal. And I, like my sister, you know, and I, we just thought the next day we'd wake up and it's like, oh, well, you know what? Our dad will walk through the door. But that was, of course, of course, wasn't going to happen. And so from from that point on i mean i was already insecure i i mean i carried baggage as a kid but i was also bullied in high school because i was very skinny and i'm you know 511 so i was the tallest in the class and that was really hard for me as well because i just wanted to be invisible you know it's it's tough and i, I you know a lot of kids go through it these days as well they get bullied in school and is that really necessary you know, it's it's it, it it really dents someone's confidence, you know, even when they exit high school, so to speak, right? When they graduate, it can still affect them. And uh, yeah, I remember going on, on a, on a, uh, um, a school camp, so to speak, to, to Belgium, to the forest there. And there was this kid, very popular kid. And um, he just grabbed my arm and in front of all the class uh, classmates, he was like, look how skinny she is. And that was horrific for me, really horrific. Uh, <laughs> and so, I mean, even after school, <clears throat> during my school, school years, uh, my mom put me on like this modeling course um, just to help with my, um, um, well, just to crick up my confidence, because I was walking around like I was carrying the weight of the world on my shoulders. 
and but that didn't work of course you know it was it's really about and like i said the 1980s and 1990s is very different to how life is today it's okay to reach out for help to go and see a counselor you know kids can go to counseling but back then it was very very different and my mom didn't find out about me being molested until i was 19 years old um and that was only because we watched an oprah winfrey show on abuse and she just said i'm so glad neither of you got abused and so i kept really quiet and so then it kind of came out um and that was really tough for me because my mom just wanted to talk about it and talk about it and talk about it i, I didn't want to um, because I'd kept it all inside and I just, I just wouldn't, didn't want to talk about it. And, um, but anyhow, when I was about 16, yeah, she put me on this course and um, I was picked out to be a hair, uh, a hair model for, for a show. And a hairdresser, don't get me wrong, is really nice, but I had hair to my shoulders and it was cut into a pixie cut and I felt ugly. I felt so ugly. That just did, did not help me. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, so that was really tough for me as well. And, and even in the modeling industry, I mean, I tried to make it. I mean, you know, I'm, tff, tell me about it. I know I'm a sadomasochist, but I really just wanted to make something out of my life and show these people, these kids at school, hey, you know what? I can be someone. Yeah, well, but that, 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 that's not how it works. But, you know, I really had to, to live and learn. And I mean, um, there is so much. I mean, it's a kettle market. It's superficial. It's horrendous, the industry. And I wasn't thick-skinned enough. I was pretty naive. And I, uh, I, I was assaulted in the industry by a hairdresser in New York. And I kept that bottled up inside as well. It just, you know, it, it wasn't until many years later that I started my healing journey. But when my stepdad passed away in 2000, I, um, my mom, my mom's, well, my mom was leaning on me for support and it was too much for me to handle. And he passed away of cancer in the throat. Uh, he was really a character. But uh, he, well, I mean, I rolled into drugs and people always wanted to see my happy face. And I know that there are many listeners out there where people will go to them for advice and that's it. But when you have a problem, yeah, it's like, oh, people are nowhere to be found because you have to put up your, you know, put on your happy face mask. And, and that is ridiculous. Um, so I rolled into drugs because I thought, hey, you know what? They want me to be happy. Let's roll with the crowds. So I did for like three months and then I suffered from blackouts and everything. And I thought to myself, yeah, this is going too far. I cannot be doing this. Um, yeah, and of course I rolled into dysfunctional relationships. Well, what do you expect? I was totally broken on the inside. So that is exactly what I attracted. And I needed that for the growth of my own soul. Yeah, I needed to heal. And my guides out there, you know, the universe were really pushing my buttons. But I was a real, real big donkey because I just kept going because my superpowers were starving myself and uh, working like crazy, you know, all to keep these emotions at bay um, and that mind chatter at bay. Uh, and I was very good at it, very good at it for many, many years. But um, I think my turning point came in 2009 when my, uh, my ex, he was part-time crack addict. He's not anymore, but um, he's turned his life around. But at that point we were thrown together and I call that you know we were thrown together because of a soul contract uh, we'd signed up for this dance prior to being incarnated and um, we really triggered one another and that was the start of my healing journey because he landed in bed with the Dutch Crips um, trying to trying to get his next fix and he was held for ransom and I helped the police out and uh, then my mom got me out of Holland in the space of several days. And uh, yeah, so I helped the police out and they found him and they um, deported him back to the US. And anyhow, um, the leader of the Crips, of the Dutch Crips called me and he said to me, if I ever find you, he's like, I'm going to kill you. And if I ever find your ex-partner, he's like, you will never find him again because he'll be dead in a ditch somewhere. 
And that, you know, for me to have my life threatened, that really shook me to my core um, because I'd never been in, in, in such a situation. And I downed a whole box of ibuprofen that night. And um, all that did for me, Kathleen, was give me a good night's sleep and it eased my headache. But I knew I couldn't go on like that anymore. And so my mom just said to me, Brigitte, why don't you go and see a counselor? I actually did. It, look, and for some people, counseling works. Yeah, you have to do whatever aligns with your spirit. And so me, it forget works. It. Forget it. Let's continue this. We have to take a quick commercial break. So when we come oh, back, okay. we'll go into the next phase because this is going into the next phase. Yes. All right. Welcome back, everyone, to the Journey of an Awakening Spirit. This is Kathleen Flanagan, your host, and we're streaming on the Bold Brave TV network. And we have Brigetta Visor in the room. And she was just getting ready to tell us what the steps she took to get to where she is today. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, so I went to see a counselor. Um, that didn't work for me because at the end of that hour, she's like, oh, Brigitte, you know what? You're going to be fine because you're strong enough. Well, actually, I was falling apart, to be honest with you. And um, so I needed to figure out how I was going to tackle this because I was pretty much exasperated. And uh, I actually found a Reiki practitioner and she was amazing, um, a beautiful soul. And I, uh, she really rebalanced me. Um, and I also studied under her for about one and a half years doing level one and two. Um, so when I started that journey, I wanted to I wanted to understand more about holistic healing. So I studied the emotional freedom technique, which is subtle, but it's very powerful. It's simple. It's so simple because all you do is tap the emotions out of the trigger, out of the you, you know, and then you can just talk about it without becoming upset. Um, so that was really an amazing technique. I became a meditation teacher, studied meditation techniques, um, studied aromatherapy. Gosh, I studied so many different healing modalities. Um, and I was just like a SpongeBob. But do not think that was the end of my experiences. And I was like an enlightened being. Oh, heck no. <laughs> it works I mean, that way. No, it doesn't doesn't work that way. But it was coming. I mean, what I did, and I've done that for many people, even for the people that I was in a relationship with. It's all all been about, you know, how can we fix someone else? Um, how can we how can we make the life of another person better? What can we do to make them happy? But no, it's looking at ourselves and thinking, you know what? What makes my heart saying what makes me happy why do i have this incessant need to fix others when i should be fixing and repairing you know the the the, the tears in my own fabric so to speak i know the answer and, to that question yeah. <laughs> yeah. i actually have a psychic tell me what the answer to that question because i like you i i had all those bad relationships and i always went after the wrong people and i but mm -hmm. She said, well, you went after them because you figured if you could fix them, you would fix yourself. Yeah. And it never worked that way. So she said, no. as soon as you start turning and looking inside of you, then everything changes. And what you're going to do is when you see those people, you're going to run the opposite direction. And that's exactly what happened. So I understand. Yeah. I mean, we we're, we have our minds are twisted backwards yeah. when we look like yeah. that. Anything but don't make me look inside of me because no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But so that so even from that point on, I mean, I started teaching when I was out in, in, in St. Petersburg in Florida. I became um, I did my Reiki masters. So I was tuning people after that. Um, I was teaching workshops and, uh, you know, in the meantime, I met another disaster, another beautiful walking disaster, as I call it. And I, gosh, this individual also triggered me. And it was someone who couldn't leave me in peace. He had a, a reckless, bless his cotton socks. He'd lost his mom. He'd never lost anyone. He fell into a depression. I was searching. Oh, yes, I was. I was searching for jobs for him. That's the story of my life, right? Because you can put me in the in, in the desert and I will always find work. 
but that has always been my attitude and everyone is different and so but i was working seven days a week i was paying his bills because he moved from an hour away to two doors down he was just very controlling possessive um had the keys to my place and refused to return them um and threatened me and it was just you know going from bad to worse so i was going back into this fight or flight mode and just just running on automatic pilot as i always did and the weight dropped off me and it was it was just ridiculous and my guides up there and you know the universe is like nah no bring it what are you doing what are you doing you're repeating the same pattern and i was i really really was but because of that the, the upside of that is when we go through these immense struggles you know i will always try and find a way uh forward um and i really i was so again i was very much depressed i was crying i was screaming at the universe and i was just often just lying on the floor in the dark at night and just screaming and finally i learned to listen i actually learned to listen and you know i got another little breadcrumb that i found um, in the form of my sister telling me to try combo healing which is shamanic frog medicine and that was really powerful physically and emotionally really powerful but when i you know, when I go into something, I do not like to put an expectation on it. So I did my research, not too much. And I found a licensed practitioner up in the Gainesville area in Florida. And I went and uh, I've never experienced anything like it, anything like it, because I was sitting there and the shaman asked me, you know, if I had an intent then you had to start drinking, you know, two liters of water. And I had this happy yellow big bucket next to me. And he burned four points into my leg and put the, um, the frog medicine on it or the frog poison, if you like. And I just, oh my gosh, in 10 seconds, the heat just rushed to my head and it was, I mean, I was throwing up, I was purging, purging and purging. And then I had to run to the toilet because it came out everywhere. And, you know, the shaman just helped me because, I mean, I, I, otherwise I couldn't make it to the toilet. And uh, it took me four hours, four hours. And finally, when it was over, you know, he said to me, do you know why it took you so long? He's like, because normally it'll take an hour or two hours. And I said, no, he's like, because your ego was battling so hard to stay in the driver's seat. Yeah, he's like, because you're so conditioned, you're so set in your ways um, that it was just really hard for you to let go. And, and that was actually really powerful. And that is the thing. Many of us are driven by our egos and and it's only because we live in this world, as I always say, we live in this world of compar comparables, comparisons and, um, you know, competing with one another. And we are opinionated. We judge one another. But and it's like our soul is stuck in the uh, in the trunk, you know, in the trunk of the car. And it's screaming like, help me, help me. And, you know, mind uh, the ego, I'll just, just, you know, just crank up the volume in, in the car, you know, I'm not, not wanting to listen to the soul. But um, what happened to me after that, I mean, I went back two more times and it was, you know, it, it, it took me two hours at that point. But I made a whole bucket list because my mind was so clear and I made a whole bucket list of like wanting to, to do things like, uh, skydiving because I'm scared of heights. So I did that. Well, I, I nearly peed in my pants, but I made it. <laughs> I, I made it back to 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 earth, so to speak. Um, I went hand gliding. I started running for charity because I promised my stepdad in 2000 that I would. And um, you know, it took me 16 years to to start doing that. And then, not even two weeks later, I met my former mentor at a fair because my my guides were like, Brigida. They were like pretty much kicking me out of the door, you know, and the fair was only five minutes away. And so she was an Akashic record healer. So she delved into past lives and it was very, very interesting because in, in that lifetime, my ex had poisoned me. And so interesting because 
she did not know that I suffered from severe stomach issues. There were times where I couldn't even hold any of my food, couldn't even hold a cup of tea. It just came straight out. And so that was karmic and that just needed to be resolved. And it was, but the beauty of that, um, of that therapy, so to speak, is that the energy changed within me, but it also changed within my ex in Florida and he left me alone. I cannot even tell you how oh, I could just breathe, you know, that sigh of relief. But it's all about finding these little pieces of the puzzle in, in how to improve your life. And it's a never ending journey it really you know it isn't i mean through her i learned how to channel and channeling was uh, it's just also really beautifully healing and it's really simple and people say yeah but i can't channel of course you can all you need to do is just sit down and take a few deep breaths and just have a notepad and a pen and just say to the universe i am open and ready to receive do you have a message for me yeah and rather than being in your mind just allow for it to flow and if you're like well I'm, well i'm still taking these deep breaths but my mind is still chatty and just put on 432 hertz or 963 hertz on uh you know meditations on youtube and that will calm your mind and just go for it does it matter if you write one sentence oh absolutely not it doesn't matter now, I, I started using my cards after that because I just wanted to see what card I would pick and what, what whichever Archangel or Ascended Master would pop up. And I would just ask if they had a message to convey. And um, yeah, it's just like riding a bike. It's the same and thing. Those steps are so simple and we think it should be that much more complex when it's oh. not. And, and I, <clears throat> I, I can do Akashic Record reading myself i know how to do that i was trained yeah and what i found is when before i learned how to do it when i did have like past life crossings with people that we there were those issues and just understanding you know because the dynamics in that past life are very much the dynamics in the current life you yeah. know even though the the situation and the circumstances are different the dynamics are still the same and it seemed to help a lot especially when i was younger of just bringing clarity of why is there this angst between us and why do i why do i love her and i feel like she doesn't like me well we were sisters and we acted like we were sisters in this lifetime and we were just friends you know so i that's what i love about the akashic records is that it does do that it helps to bring that and it's as simple as what you said of sitting and listening because that's how i learned how to do it too i mean i always heard mm -hmm. to really get more disciplined made all the difference in the world well we're going to go ahead and take a quick commercial break and we'll see you in just a minute welcome back everyone to the journey of an awakening spirit this is kathleen flanagan your host and we're streaming on the bold brave tv network and we have brigetta advisor in the room with us so brigetta um what are you doing today talking to you <laughs> well i know that <laughs> What ass. <laughs> no, you know, I mean, all these things that you learned and took no. all this knowledge in, what are you doing? I know that you say you still have a corporate job, but you're doing everything. I do. So I do. You yeah, so I have one foot in the spiritual and one foot in the, in the corporate world. But mind you, <laughs> last year was a trip for me because... You know, I was working like 70 hours a week, having two full time jobs within the company. And I had to push back because I was getting so short. I was suffering from shortness of breath. I was I lost about eight kilograms and I was living in the UK and it was so destroying for me. Absolutely soul destroying. And I had always been sitting on the fence about moving to Spain. It was finally boom. I just got that nudge. Um, to go and people can say yes the grass is not always greener on the other side uh, yes and no uh, but it was really that push from the universe that I got and I needed to go I really needed to have that time and space to heal and you know just be in that cocoon and do my own thing even and I yes now I have one role within the company and 
you know, I do my hours and that's it. I think people don't realize it's like, hey, you know what? What happens if you, God forbid, you get hit by a bus tomorrow? Yeah. Well, you'll be replaced in the space of several weeks. And yet we, we, we are so tedious about working, you know, doing our, doing our, doing our jobs. And we're, we're running along this conveyor belt of life, so to speak, but there is so much more to life. And I always say it's really about following your passions. Yes, we have this 3D where we have to pay our bills and, um, you know, let's keep a roof over, over our head. But that does not mean that we cannot follow our passions. And it's something that I really needed to learn. And so now, of course, I do my, I, you know, I, I do my podcast, but I've, I've written one, two, three, or four books actually two collaborations the third one the, the third collab second collaboration book comes out in august my second solo book comes out in probably end of september so it's been it's been crazy but it, that does not mean i do not go through difficult experiences i do but i'm more consciously aware of them and i i do know how to handle myself um doesn't that doesn't mean it's easy, but you know we go through the motions. Um, but yes, I do. I do my um, channeling, so I still do my writing, uh, which is important. My meditation practice every morning and every evening that is important. And people will say, yeah, but but you know I don't have time to meditate. Really, twenty minutes out of your day in the morning and twenty minutes at night. I don't care if you listen to whatever whatever agrees with your soul but meditation if you want if you're just starting out um listen to david g on um on youtube and he has 20 minute guided meditations on fear anxiety confidence um putting the intent out there um, and it's really easy to follow and the beauty about these meditations is that because you're following the breath you know you don't get lost in that endless mind chatter and there's really one very powerful little exercise, which I do not do often enough, and I should, because it's very simple, because it, you know, it takes like 10, 15 seconds. It's about grounding ourselves and really being present in the moment, but also being very present within ourselves, yeah, rather than looking towards the future or living in the past. And all you need to do is really close your eyes and just imagine yourself or visualize yourself sitting on a couch behind your eyes. And I don't care how you, whatever else, however the room looks like, that doesn't matter. As long as you visualize yourself sitting on a couch behind your eyes. And then you, imagine, you envision going down to your root chakra, which is at the base of your spine. And then you imagine <laughs> light coming out or a beam of light coming out or roots growing out of your root chakra and it goes all the way to the center of the earth where it wraps around a beautiful luminous crystal yeah that is charged with energy and then you allow for that energy to go all the way back up to three root chakra and through your body and allow that energy to expand within your energy field and once you feel that right you are very present within your body in this very moment and when you are that is where you have the power to create yeah and manifest the life that you want yeah because you're in the now and that is the big difference so that's the one of the things that i i should be doing more often i talk to people a lot about this uh but yeah so other than that, you know, yes, I, I do channel and I do, I do do my light language healing. Yeah. Well, I know that meditation, <laughs> I, I've done it a little differently, but you know, it's amazing how much what you've studied is what I've studied. And, and that's the one thing is when you take that energy into the core of the earth, you are mm -hmm. so, grounded. that's the cool part. So you're grounded where you can actually soar. And that's how I always look at it because people don't understand, well, how can you be grounded and soar? It's like, but you have to, because if you're soaring and you're not grounded, you're going to get lost and you're not going to find your way back because yeah. when you get free of your body like that, you want to play out there because it is such a freeing experience because yes. your head crash is gone. 
you're having this, you know, you're in this immense loving vibration that we don't feel in the human world because of the rat race, because of what goes yes. on in social media. And this yeah. is just that, oh, it's like one of the most coolest, tranquil places to be. And so thank you for sharing that with the um, audience, because it's been a long time since I actually did that. And and I know what that's like, because it is, it's very empowering because it's like you open your mind to being that little kid that you once were. Yeah. You go back to play. And a lot of times we forget to play and that's what spirit wants us to do is be happy and joyful and play because yeah. the best things come to us. So when I feel like I'm way too much up here in business or whatever, and I feel like something's missing here, it's what do I do? I go out in the garden and I ground myself into the earth because the earth is going to take care of me and protect me. And it's like all this angst just goes away. And then all this new information comes in. That's so exciting. And if it doesn't happen right away, it's okay. Because that means I have too much up here still going on and I need to keep working through it. But it, it's about being patient with ourselves. And I think that's one thing that all of us forget that we need to be patient with ourselves. It's, there's no crystal wand because if there was, I would have found it. I promise you, I would have found it and I would have shared it. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. it didn't happen. But, you know, we're a work in progress and that's the thing. We're always going to be a work in progress. We're never yeah. going to have everything right here, right now. So being present, you're perfect. And where your life is, is perfect. Because if it wasn't, if you weren't here, you would be someplace else. It's as simple as that. You're here for the highest good and the world is always, the universe is always working in your favor. And that nudging about picking up and leaving. I can't even tell you how many times I've done that myself too. Yeah. And people are like, why are you doing it? Because I'm supposed to. Why? Because I'm am. And I just trusted that. And I, and that scares a lot of people to trust implicitly like that. And yet I've never fallen. I've just grown. So, you know, so what a beautiful story to share of a life journey that I've had on very similar, you know, levels and yep. to just like, oh, this is so my story. This is so my, story. oh, I remember that. I remember, <laughs> I did that, I could do that. You know, so how fun is that to just kind of come back and, and play, you know? Yep. I mean, yep. so many of us are very similar and we just forget just because you look different and you're tall and skinny and I could be short and fat, which I'm not, but you know what I mean? It doesn't matter what this looks like. No, it's it doesn't. What's, it's what's in our heart. It's always yes. what's in our heart. And do what makes your heart sing. Yeah, no, I totally agree with that. And that's the thing. I always say to people, you know, you are a beautiful soul. And because you're right, it doesn't matter what we look like. It's the light within us that radiates. And we are all, there is no difference between any of us. Yeah, sure, our physical appearance. But the light in each and every one of us is the same. And we're here to return to that love for ourselves and each other. And that is the hardest part. You know, my dad, even when I was a kid, you know, he passed in 1988 now, but um, he used to say, stand in front of the mirror and tell yourself, I love you. I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, as a kid, it's you're like, what? <laughs> and you don't feel good about yourself. That is so hard, but it's life changing. Yes. It really, really is. And it's not self selfish to love yourself. You know, it's selfless because how can you love others if you can't even love yourself? If you've got, if you've got nothing to, to, if your cup is not overflowing and that is really important because that self care, that self nurturing, that self love, once you start to take care of yourself, you know, your inner world changes. That's true, but your outer world also changes because we're energy. Yeah, we're not just this blob of this, just this body, but we're energy. Exactly. That's exactly right. And I, I remember when I was in my early 20s, I remember going in the bathroom and just saying how much I hated myself. I mean, with yeah. all the venom and hate that I had because. Uh, there was to me there was nothing of value at all and i had to learn that and when somebody said look in the mirror and say i love you and was like what <laughs> i can't do that 
and it just it, it seemed like it almost took forever for me to say it. Mm -hmm. And then when I said it, it was like it just hurt because all of a sudden when you say that to yourself and you're feeling this love, but it's like, wait a minute, this doesn't feel good to me, but it was a mind changing thing. It started making that difference in how I perceive the world too, because if I could feel love for me, then that means there's love out there. I can give it out. I can receive it instead of what I was receiving at that point in my life. Well, we're going to go ahead and take a quick commercial break. Welcome back everyone to the journey of an awakening spirit. This is Kathleen Flanagan, your host, and we're streaming on the bold brave TV network. Brigetta, what is one piece of advice that you would offer our audience to help them move into a different direction to achieve their dreams or become a better person? Uh, first of all, take responsibility for your life. Take accountability, regardless if something's happened in your childhood. Yeah, I mean, that is not, it may not be your fault, but it's still your responsibility to, uh, you know, for you to, to, how do you say that? To take back your I am power and change your life. And I know this from <laughs> quantum mechanics, you know, it's easy to say, change your thinking, change your life. It's all about shifting our consciousness and healing from our experiences because our experiences are not meant to taunt us. They're not meant to bring us down, but they're meant to help us elevate our awareness and understanding why things happen the way they happened. Yeah, so that, you do not sit marred and like a statue in that victimhood mentality. Um, because I always say to people, you know, you, you matter, you're worthy, you have value. Yeah. And you have the right to be happy. Everyone has the right to be happy. Um, and that's what life is all about. Finding that joy within and cultivating that joy. Um, yeah, so that's my one piece of advice. Take that accountability and take that responsibility because trust me, you when you walk through that darkness and you make friends with the demons in your head because we often think they're foes, but they're not, and we hug it out. Yeah, we hug it out with ourselves and we learn to forgive ourselves. We show that compassion um, <clears throat> towards ourselves. Um, and that love and just being gentle with ourselves. And it doesn't really matter, Kathleen, what people think of you. I always say what matters is what you think of you and how you feel about yourselves. Yeah, do not be swayed by the opinions of others. It is your life and you need to live it. You need to live it as you see fit. And the, the reason people are so, I call that, you know, we live in the land of confusion, confusion is because we are at a dis-ease within ourselves. Yeah. And we need to realign our spirit within our body because, hey, come on, our body is the only given home. Yeah. That, uh, that our soul, um, that our soul actually lives in. That's our home. And we have to make it, we have to be comfortable in our own skin. There are so many things you said there that I left my body for three days and I learned okay. what that meant. I knew what that meant <clears throat> because our body cannot function without the soul. Our soul, yeah. our spirit is the driving force of the body. I didn't shower. I ate a bag of Doritos because I didn't know how to cook. I managed to make coffee because that was just a habit. And that was the extent of three days. And I didn't know that I went on a little journey for mm -hmm. three days. It took me six months. So yeah, when you say that this body is nothing more than a house of our light, that's exactly what it is. And I, and being gentle with yourself is so incredibly critical because everything that we went through leads us up to where we are today. And, yeah. and if you look back and reflect, you will see that journey of what your reason for being on this planet is for. It takes time. It takes really being honest with yourself and reflecting. Wow. And as hard as my life has been, and as much as I never wanted to be here, I thank God that I created the life that I have today because it would never have happened this way if I hadn't 
gone through that because that was the greatest liberating feeling to finally own that I do have value, my life has value. And it's because of the journey within. It's about, it's, it's what you said, the journey within, being kind, being gentle. Would you treat someone else the way you treat yourself? No. So why would you torture yourself when you would never do that to another human being? And when you start taking that perception and flipping it, hmm. that's when you start making the forward move in it, movement in your life. When you start looking at, at yourself as a value, because that's what I did. It's like, would, would you ever tor torture anyone like you do to yourself? No. Would you ever tell somebody you hate them like this? No. Then why are you doing it to yourself? You know what I mean? I mean, when you logically think, and you have to put logic in here at that moment, everything starts to change because you're not going to do that. And most people aren't going to do that to you either. I mean, yes, you have some nasty people out there that are into that, but the majority of the people aren't. And the only reason those people were in your life was so you could be where you are today to deliver the message that only you can deliver and give hope to those that you reach. So how can people get a hold of you? Uh, they can get a hold of me through my website, which is powersoulhealing.com. And then I am on, well, I am on Instagram, but I keep being restricted or suspended. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm uh, under um, Universal Light Warriors, and then I'm on Facebook as well, under actually my own name, Brigitte Visser. And then I have my YouTube channel, which is under Power Soul Healing. But you know what? If you go to my website, you can find all the links there. <laughs> Well, I thank you so much for joining us today, Brigitte. I just really enjoyed the conversation. Yes. Um, you know, the journey that you've been on has not been easy, but you're, you're bright, you're shining, you're laughing, you're happy. So it couldn't have been all that bad. And again, it's all because you took the time and found the value in you to move to that next level. So again, yeah. thank you so much for being with me today. I truly enjoyed our time together. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, Kathleen. You're welcome. So if everyone, if you guys really enjoyed the show, I would appreciate it if you would like or subscribe to the channel and feel free to give the link to a family member of anybody that you think might help um, them in their journey because there was a lot of good information that Brigetta gave to us. And if you're struggling with anything that we talked about today, feel free to reach out to me at Brave TV at Kathleen M. Flanagan. I, you know, we can send you off. I can have this conversation. We can book a time on my calendar and we can just talk about whatever is going on with you. So you don't have to suffer in silence anymore. Be sure to check out Kathleen M. Flanagan for the list of services and products that are being offered there. And I do have a three minute de-stress meditation that is absolutely free and it's great to start your day and to send you off into sleeping. And it's also would help with what Brigetta was saying. If you have that chatter going on in your brain, these would work very well to stop that quietness so you can really ground into your body. Be sure to visit awakeningspirit.com and take advantage of the 40% coupon, the 40% discount by entering Brave TV into the coupon code. And the same applies for Grandma's Natural Remedies for the 20% coupon. And this concludes our show, show for today. And I will look, I look forward to seeing all of you next week at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And from my heart to yours, I hope you have a fabulous week.